Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is finally here, but before you jump into the next part of the adventure, there are several settings you should really change to get the best experience possible, so make sure to stick around. There are no spoilers in this video, and all gameplay is taken from a demo, so don't worry about me spoiling anything here. Setting number one is found under the gameplay settings, and is to change combo targeting from fixed to free. This means that instead of being forced into always being locked onto an enemy in combat, you can very easily switch between them, in addition to still having the option to lock on with R3. This is how combat is handled in most games these days, and I think to most of his playing, this will feel significantly smoother and much more familiar. So and what's in conjunction with this is setting number two, which is actually found in the camera settings, and is to change lock on controls to the menu controls and auto camera option. By default, switching between the enemy you have locked onto is done by moving R3, but as this also controls camera movement, keeping it set to this can make things a bit confusing. With it changed though, you now switch a target you're locked onto using the left and right directional buttons on the D pad, and the camera will automatically pan to look at the enemy that you've changed that target lock too. Whilst we're in the camera settings, the third setting is to adjust the responsiveness value. This is essentially the sensitivity of your right stick, and is therefore a case of personal preference, so I would encourage you to experiment with it. I find 4 to be the sweet spot, and with this increased responsiveness, all aspects of the gameplay feel even more fluid than before, without being too fast. Oh, and if you're wondering where this awesome controller is from, then it's actually one of the many shells offered by Extreme Rate to customise your your existing door sense without having to buy a new one. This is their Crystal Fantasy design, which does boast a clear Final Fantasy sort of look, but there are absolutely loads to choose from, including this great Golden Wave design, and even ones themed on other games like Spider-Man. They offer other controller mods too, and they very kindly provided me with 5 $50 coupons to give away. To enter, just subscribe to help me reach my goal of 100,000, as well as like the video and leave a comment letting me know who your favourite Final Fantasy character is. Thanks again to Extreme Rate for doing this and for sponsoring the video. You can look through their products by clicking the first link in the description and use code Octorious for 10% off. Anyway, going back into the gameplay options, setting number 4 is still in the camera menu and is to increase both camera distance values to a maximum. Personally, I much prefer having a slightly wider field of view so I can see more of that gorgeous environment around me as well as have that extra millisecond to react when something just jumps at me from the edge of the screen. Play around with both of these of course, but I bet you do end up increasing them. Let me know if I'm wrong. Now, going back to the gameplay settings, setting number 5 is to change your cursor position to remember for both the in and out of battle options. This means that when you reopen the command menus to give attacks, it opens up where you last left off. This saves so much time and makes things so much easier if you like to repeat the same attack a lot, or even just for healing faster as you don't have to go through all the menus every single time. It's a massive quality of life improvement and absolutely something that everyone should change. Just below Below this is the sixth setting, which is to consider changing how you issue commands to the command shortcuts option. This way, instead of pressing the trigger and then working your way through all the commands menu to control your allies, you can just hold the trigger and press a face button with it to issue an attack command significantly faster, much in the same way you can use a bumpers to perform quick attacks as whoever you're controlling. This is definitely personal preference, but for me it makes combat feel more fast paced and I do prefer that. Speaking of combat, once you're confident with how it works, and now all of the controls, you might also want to change the combat controls guide display option to hide. This will clean up the hood a bit, but it definitely isn't one to change from the get go, so wait to do this until you're sure you have mastered the controls. Anyway, like the last setting to change before playing, setting number 7 is also a bit more preference based, but it's to enable the option to swap the guard and command shortcut controls. By default, parrying and blocking is done using R1, but literally every other game that I'm used to playing, such as Spider-Man 2 and Jedi Survivor all use L1, so I find that with this disabled, I kept instinctively hitting L1 to parry and therefore dying as a result. By swapping them though, L1 becomes a block button in Final Fantasy as well, which I found to be a great help as my blocking instincts from other games can now carry over. Basically, it means my spider sense still kind of works. Moving on, go further down the gameplay menu until you find the 8th setting, which is to change both minimap display area values to the maximum. This doesn't actually increase the size of the minimap at all, but it does zoom it out so you can see way more around you. 
This is really useful for navigation, and I truly have no idea why you would ever want this any lower than the maximum value. So make sure to change it. Oh, and as a bonus option, it's also worth me mentioning that you can change the minimap to be static. By default, the minimap rotates with your movement, but personally, I think it makes more sense for it to stay still. Therefore, I have changed mine to static, and I'd encourage you to try it like that too. Next up is setting number nine, which is to change the chat log option either to dialogue only or to hide it entirely. This is because when wandering around a busy area, the chat log gets full very fast, covering up a lot of the screen, so I have changed it to dialogue only to try and free up a bit more extra space. The majority of character dialogue that goes here is just some unnamed characters anyway. Speaking of characters, don't forget to leave a comment letting me know who your favourite is and I'll make sure to heart it in addition to you being entered into Extreme Rates Giveaway. Also, please drop a like if any of these settings have helped you, as well as consider subscribing as I'm really close to my goal of 100,000 and would greatly appreciate your help to get there. My whole channel is focused on PlayStation, so I'm sure you'd find it of value. To see my guide and full thoughts on a brand new Pulse Elite headset, watch a video on screen now, or alternatively, click the one below it to see loads of other settings that you should change on your PS5 itself.